Even in the nearly three hours of supernatural horror, IT Chapter 2 can't tie up every loose end left hanging. But never fear, because we're here to help you look back over everything that happened in the sequel to identify its most compelling unanswered questions. Warning! Spoilers are ahead. Richie's flashback to the arcade strongly implies he's gay and still in the closet. We see him playing Street Fighter with another boy, and when Richie suggests they hang out more, the boy spots his cousin, Bully Henry Bowers, and goes on the offensive, claiming that Richie was hitting on him. When Pennywise appears to Richie shortly afterward, he teases him saying he knows his dirty little secret. In 2016, Richie takes the death of Eddie harder than any of the other losers, and toward the end of the film, he returns to a bridge where he carved their initials together into the rail, suggesting that Richie's feelings for Eddie went beyond friendship. We're never told for sure, but it seems likely. It's tough not to wonder exactly how the grown-up losers ever get in and out of Derry without being arrested. Their reunion dinner ends with them trashing their private dining room when Pennywise unleashes his illusions. When the hostess walks in, she finds Mike smashing a chair into the table, yet no one so much as scolds them for it. Richie screams at a little kid as they leave the restaurant, and Bill is there to watch that same little boy get devoured by it at the carnival. Most egregious, Richie buries a hatchet in Bower's head in the Derry library. Yet no police officers show up to so much as question the losers about anything. We never find out how they explain Eddie's disappearance. When Stanley's widow sends them all a letter he wrote before killing himself, there aren't any follow-up calls from curious detectives. The only police you're likely to notice in the film are the ones beating the hell out of the young Henry Bowers in a flashback. It's like the cops just disappeared. What is going on here? Are they here? just screwing with us? Where are the cops? It's not just the police who are missing. Obviously, people live in Derry, but judging by the film, outside of a few scenes at the carnival, it's hard to tell. The bed and breakfast, where most of the losers are staying, is all but deserted. They're constantly yelling, arguing, and banging things around in the entryway. Eddie is attacked in his room by Henry, who stabs him in the mouth. Eddie stabs Bowers in the chest, and the lunatic retreats out the window. No one ever comes around to ask about the blood or the broken furniture. When Bill grabs the same little boy Richie yelled at, earlier in broad daylight and yells at him that he has to get out of town, there's no one around to ask him what he thinks he's doing. When the losers emerge from its lair and the house collapses into the earth, there's no one around then either. The streets are even deserted when they return to downtown. Derry seems like a ghost town. In Stephen King's novel, the writer makes it clear that as threatening as it is, the monster is not the only powerful force with a stake in what happens in Derry. Before their battle with it, the young losers encounter a godlike space turtle named Maturin, a benevolent spiritual force. While the direct help the turtle can offer the heroes is minimal, it does remind them that they are not alone in their battle. But the turtle exists in little more than Easter eggs in the It films. The young Bill finds a Lego turtle in Georgie's room in 2017's It. In the sequel, there's a prominent turtle model in a classroom. Those seem to be the only direct nods to Maturin. Where are the Summer turtles? Sausage. Where are the turtles? Come on, guys, get out of here! Where are the turtles? We know it crashed to Earth a long time ago, and that its existence was well known to the Native Americans who once lived where Derry, Maine is now. It's made of deadlights. That's about all we know. In his final battle with the losers, Pennywise refers to himself as the Eater of Worlds. Is it just bragging, or is there more to it than we know? This is another example of more being revealed in King's books, particularly his Dark Tower series. But even there, we don't get a complete picture. Not to mention the fact that there's no reason the it of the films and the it of the books has to be the same entity. When the losers reunite, we learn that with the exception of Mike, they've mostly forgotten everything about Derry. But over time, we discover at least one of them maybe hadn't forgotten at all, nor kept their attentions away from the town entirely. Beverly is surprised to learn about her father's death when Mrs. Kirsch informs her of it, but Eddie remembers all the details of his mother's passing, volunteering the details of her cancer to the pharmacist, Mr. Keene. That could mean a couple of things. One, that Eddie, at the very least, kept up with his mother in Derry until her death giving him some lingering connection to the town. Or two, that she also left the town at some point. We don't find out which is the case. Though there are some brief mentions in later King novels, including the Tommyknockers and the Dark Tower series, the loser's final battle with Pennywise seems to have been the end for the monster, at least as far as its influence in Derry was concerned. A King fan would likely argue that a return of Pennywise in the movies would be sacrilege. But if IT Chapter 2 rakes in the kind of money it's expected to, 
Hollywood might be fine with a little sacrilege. Bitter because people die. Right. And sweet right. because you're making money. Exactly. The questions IT Chapter 2 leaves unanswered could lay a narrative foundation for the villain's return. If it was an alien, couldn't there be more like IT? And what if IT laid eggs? In the book, the losers indeed have to destroy a clutch of eggs IT laid. Could a sequel focus on some baby ITs? Time and ticket sales will tell. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.